All right, welcome everyone. Can you hear me in the back? A couple of thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome uh, to your first week here uh, on Hogwarts campus. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here, but more importantly, I think we're all quite excited to be able to spend some of this time with you um, and talk about a few of the resources available to you over the next four years, but really allow you to engage with some of your peers who have utilized these resources and the opportunities on campus and are doing truly extraordinary things. So, a little bit about myself. Um, in a past life, I was a professional drummer and quite often would play rooms about this size. Um, and it took my bandmates one show, precisely one show, to take my microphone away from me because um, I'm a terrible singer. So suffice it to say, I'm better on this type of stage than I was singing behind the drum set. My name is Matthew Golden. I am the Assistant Vice Provost for Life Design for undergraduate and master's students. Um, what that means is I have the opportunity to oversee a team of life design educators within the life design lab. The life design lab is located just across the field at the Imagine Center uh, and does what I truly believe is extraordinary work in the space that is traditionally called career services uh, housed within a career center. So, let me try to do three things uh, quickly before we, we start with, with our panel. First, introduce you to the Life Design Lab and how we do our work. Second, maybe provide some clarity around what is life design. It sounds like a little bit of a word jumble. Um, and then third, we'll set up for, for our panel and, and can talk a little bit about how you can engage and be a part of this conversation. So the Life Design Lab, as I said, uh, occupies the space of career services uh, what your peers from high school are, are likely engaging with a career center at their universities. The university made a commitment to all of you uh, as students to change the model of career services to life design with the thought that equity and scalability is extraordinarily important. You have so much on your plates already that a traditional model that says go to the side of campus, book an appointment uh, on a first come first serve basis only one out of three of you would likely have the opportunity to engage with career services in that model. So we kind of flipped it on its head and said, we're going to establish facilitators and educators. And these life design educators will be aligned with your academic department and with co-curriculars. So if you're a student athlete, as first year students, when you get into student leadership, we also have life design educators who are working in those spaces. Because where you self-identify on campus, that's where we need to be. So through this model, over five years, the Life Design Lab is now engaging with about nine out of 10 of you every single year. So hopefully you do not have to work super hard outside of the path that you're on to know that we are there. But when you find yourself in a position where you don't know the next step, or you don't know what opportunity is gonna help propel you forward outside of the classroom, we want you to come to the Imagine Center and say, I have a question, I'm curious, I don't know the answer. It's a beautiful place to be that can sometimes be scary in an academic setting. But the Life Design Lab and Life Design Educators are here to support you in that way. All right, so a little bit about how we do our work. We engage with our students and support you, I think, through three primary channels. First and foremost is being available to you in the Imagine Center and being available to you in your academic and co-curricular spaces. Life design educators will be communicating to you when they're available. Um, so if you have career readiness questions like, I need someone to help with my resume, sure, we can do that. But when you're thinking, something about this path I'm on doesn't feel right and I want to explore that more, we want to be able to connect you with resources, with alumni, and with programs so that you can develop skills, develop practices that will lead to success, and get answers to the questions that you have as you move your life design forward here at Johns Hopkins. Um, the second way is through high impact programs. The Life Design Lab is committed to bringing experiences to you so that if you are looking for an internship that's unpaid, we have ample funding to support you. If you want to go take a two-week trip uh, to Philadelphia and Raleigh to learn more about healthcare, we have intercession courses to bring you into those spaces. Um, if you are thinking about 
career readiness competencies at 2.45 in the morning, which does happen, we have on-demand resources on our website as well, so that if these programs aren't the right spaces for you, you can find what you need uh, at your fingertips at any point of the day. So we have our life design educators who meet you on campus. We have dozens and dozens of experiential opportunities. Um, but what I really want to kind of demystify is, so what is life design? And these four pillars explain how you'll be engaging with our office over the course of the next four years. The first, appropriately titled for today's panel, is Get Curious. We want you to get curious about who you are. A lot of our students, you come in, I want to go to one of these 10 medical schools, uh, I want to be a software engineer at Google, and that is the, the limited definition of success. This is a wonderful four-year opportunity for you that we want you to explore who you are and develop the skills and the competencies you need to live fulfilling lives. And so we want you to get curious about what identities do you carry that matter the most. What are the, your core values that you want to make sure that you adhere to as a person and as a professional? What skills and strengths do you want to develop and do you like to lean on? Can you clearly define yourselves and articulate success through that scope and not just a job title? Then we want you to imagine possible lives. At Hopkins, you can explore five or six different pathways. You can pursue uh, medical school while engaging uh, in areas of entrepreneurship to develop those skills. So we want you to imagine the many different ways Hopkins is here to support you and what you see as success upon graduation, and then try that out through these programs and conversations. And that's where Experience More comes in. All of these programs that our office, uh, the PAVA Center, many of our, our co-curricular spaces are creating are here to help you try things out. It's not just about developing skills. Sometimes it's about, let me take this internship and say, that wasn't for me, but I love being in New York City, so I know that about myself. Finance might not be my thing. So you can take these experiences that you have at your fingertips and then engage with our life design educators with the PAVA Center and have the conversations to figure out what the next immediate step is. And then finally, craft your story. I usually like to say that if you're not telling your story, there's someone out there who most certainly will. So the experiences that, that you're trying on here at Hopkins, the skills you're developing, what does that mean to the, the person, the identities, the value? Can you tell that story about what brought you here to Hopkins, what's driving you through the experience, and how this is going to have an impact not only on you, but the people you love and the communities that you serve in the future? So that's what life design is. Yes, we do career readiness, but we do so much more because you're not just your job title. You're not just a student at Hopkins. You carry many different identities, and we and you should value each and every one of them and, and serve those while you're here on campus. All right, I think I'm doing right on time here. So let's get to uh, the panel we're about to engage with that is around developing confidence while you're here at Johns Hopkins through that curiosity. The curiosity leads to engagements with your peers, with the university, and then with experiences that develop the skills so that you can be more confident as you navigate as Hopkins students and eventually one day alumni professionals uh, changing the world. Um, so we have this QR code up here. We have a few questions that are lined up to start the conversation. But if you have questions specifically for our panelists after you, after you meet them in a moment, please scan or text and send your questions in. Uh, and Josh, over at the end of the panel there, is going to be curating those and helping drive the conversation. So with that said, thank you again for being here. It's so great to see you all. And Josh, please take it from there. Thanks, Matthew. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you so much for sharing. My name is Josh Ambrose, and I'm the director of the PAVA Center for Entrepreneurship here at Hopkins. Our co-working facility is on the southern end of campus, right on the edge uh, in the Remington neighborhood next to the R House Food Hall. Matthew and the Life Design Lab office is up at the north end, so between the two of us, we got you covered from top to bottom uh, as you explore your career options and your goals uh, for what you want to do during your time here and after graduation. Uh, at the PAVA Center, my team and I help students start businesses. 
We do that through extracurricular programming, uh, almost a million dollars in grants that we give out each year, uh, hundreds of mentors, thousands of industry connections, and much more. We work with hundreds of students like you each year, from the curious to the committed, who are looking to not just explore their options, but to cultivate and pursue their startup dreams. And that is what I love about Hopkins students. You are a bunch who sees problems and opportunities in the world around you. And then you want to engage with it and you want to do something about it. That's what brought you here, I think is pretty safe to say. And that's what we are committed to helping you continue to do over your next few years of being here. The rest of the folks up here on stage are wonderful examples of that. They've worked with both of our offices extensively and have engaged with all kinds of exciting opportunities that are gonna tell you more about. So with that, I'm gonna ask them to please introduce themselves uh, with their name, their major, maybe a project or experience that you wanna highlight to start with. Um, but above all else, where did you get curious and what did you do with that? And all of you can again connect with them and see their profiles by scanning this QR code and texting them questions as we go. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it off to Stone to introduce himself as our first panelist. Hey everyone, my name is Stone Meng. I'm from Texas, and I'm a junior studying biomedical engineering. There are three things I'm focused on this year. The first is to serve as your student body president, where I take your advice and suggestions and bring them to admins and improve our campus life. The second is my startup, Higher Grounds Vending. That's the blue uh, coffee and milk tea vending machine that you see in Scott Bates Commons on your way to Nolan's. And uh, the success of that startup is largely because of the Pava Center, which I'll talk more about later. And lastly, I'm serving as a BME design team leader this year. With that said, I'm very excited to meet all of you, and I can't wait to hear your questions. Thanks, Stone. My name is Jalen. I am a rising senior at Hopkins studying computer science, also minoring in music and robotics, so happy to talk about that. Um, and there's a lot of things about me, but I would like to highlight that one thing that's important to me is that I am a teaching assistant for data structures. So if anybody is taking that class, I am looking forward to um, talking to you and meeting you later this semester. So nice to meet you all. Hey guys, my name is Lizzie. I'm a senior double majoring in cognitive science and computer science. I've done a lot of things over the past few years, but a couple things that I've done are this summer I was interning at the Afro-American newspapers downtown through the In Baltimore program with the Life Design Lab, as well as over intercession, I went on one of the treks that Matthew mentioned about tech and entrepreneurship in Baltimore, DC, and New York City. Hi everyone, my name is Selena Shurkin. I just graduated from Hopkins with a degree in biomedical engineering and a minor in entrepreneurship. So I'm super excited to be talking with you all here today. I'm currently pursuing my master's at the Center for Bioengineering, Innovation and Design at Hopkins. And the project that I really wanna highlight is my startup, Fetal Therapy Technologies. So we're working directly with fetal surgeons at the Johns Hopkins Hospital to improve the safety of fetal surgical procedures. These are procedures that are performed on a pregnant mother to operate on her fetus because her fetus has some sort of life-threatening birth defect. But what's really crazy about these surgeries is that there are no devices FDA approved to perform them. So everything is used kind of off the shelf, off label. You have these really high complication rates. So what my team and I are doing is we are improving the safety of these procedures by making devices specifically for them. So I'm super interested in entrepreneurship, medical devices, and very excited to meet you all today. So as we wait for some of these questions to come in, I, I think I'll kick it off with a question for each of, of you on the panel here. Um, it was kind of buried in that first question, but I really want to call it out. Um, how has curiosity shown up in your journey here at Hopkins? But also, how has curiosity served you on your journey here? Lizzie, maybe me start with Lizzie and then bounce around? Okay. <laughs> um, I think for me, honestly, like curiosity has kind of been 
the driver of my entire journey. I started out here as a pure math major, but I knew that I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do with that, and so I took a bunch of different classes and talked to a bunch of different professors and ended up with my current majors and learned a lot about a lot of different things that I didn't know existed before college. So I think for me, it's less of a question of when did it show up or how has it been part of my journey and more just curiosity has been the thing that's made my journey what it is. I, I would agree with that. I, I also think that curiosity has been a driver um, and a leader in all that I've done here at Hopkins and throughout my life. Um, I would say for me, um, curiosity has really led me to places that I didn't think I would go. Um, it also uh, led me to places where I realized, okay, maybe this isn't what I want to do. Um, I've also had um, certain minors and also another major in college that I ended up dropping because I realized that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, certain experiences, internships that I've had, I realized that's not the field that I want to go into. So I think just as important as it is to showing what you love, it's also important to show what you don't want to do, which is also just as useful. Absolutely. For me, I can use the student government as an example. Because in high school, I was a huge robotics fan. I did FTC and stuff and never touched student government. And you may wonder, like, hey, so why, do you, why are you student body president? So it's because partly, you know, when I got here as a freshman, I saw that there are a lot of improvements that could be made on our campus, in dining, transportation, and they're doing great in improving those. But also, at the time, I was watching an anime called um, Kaguya-sama, Love, Love is War, and I was like, you know, that character in there, as a student government person, super cool, and I want to be like that. So I tried, tried it out, I applied, and I won. And, uh, you know, I don't regret that experience at all, and that's how curiosity got me to here I am today. It may not be related to what I loved in high school, but that's what I'm doing in college now. And I urge you to take those passion of yours and use college as this launch pad to try anything that you want. Yeah, I think to be a Hopkins student like you all are here today, you have to be naturally curious. And for me, my curiosity kind of led me to take a lot of initiative. So even in high school, I had no idea I was going to be a biomedical engineering person. I had no idea I was going to work on medical devices. My first little venture was a student driving app, which failed miserably. We won't have to talk about that. But, you know, my curiosity led me to take a lot of initiative, led me to ask a lot of questions and meet so many awesome people. So it's helped me all throughout my journey at Hopkins and all throughout my journey as an entrepreneur. So a lot of student questions coming in. And again, continue to please text the number up on screen. Uh, one of the first ones that I would be curious to hear maybe two responses to is, and this is something I have seen online before, <coughs> read it, and people are wondering, tell us a little bit about the competition here. Like, do you feel there's enough opportunities to go around? Or have you felt like you had to fight other students to do cool things? Um, Jalen, I'm gonna take this to you, because I mean, obviously running for student body president, you had to compete. Stone, I'm sorry, what did I say? Anyways, Stone, you first, and then um, one of the ladies, you wanna take it after that? Great. Sure thing, I'd be happy to talk about that. So in terms of competition, um, I had a fear that you know, it's going to be really competitive in Hopkins because everybody's so smart, but that's not the case at all. <laughs> but don't, don't get me wrong. No, no. I mean, I mean, everybody is smart. I'm saying it's the not competitive part, OK? Don't get me wrong. So, so OK. Ah, just insulted. It. Don't get me wrong, yes. So everybody is really smart, OK? But they're all super friendly here as well, OK? Because one thing that I learned here is that, you know, yes, Hopkins is an academically rigorous school, and I, had, I struggled with academics at times, but my friends here, they're all super helpful. You don't really have to worry about people like, oh, not sharing notes and not helping out. That's never my experience here. It's really nice. And as ter in terms of uh, student government, if you're interested in running for that, the process is like in the first few weeks of school, and we actually encourage teamwork in that as well, because you can run as a ticket. You can have you know, people running for different positions together. So overall, you know, Hopkins has a really healthy competition where everybody pushes each other to greater heights, but also supporting each other. And you guys are smart. Sorry for the slip there. 
Yeah, so going off of that point, I'm someone who recently graduated from Hopkins. Honestly, being very honest, I've struggled with imposter syndrome here a lot, even since I was a freshman. But one of the really awesome things about Hopkins is the people. All of the friends I've had, super supportive. I've never felt like I was competing with people for spots. We always kind of supported each other in pursuing the different things we wanted to pursue. There are so many opportunities here, and this is a point that I will make later, but if you take initiative and you pursue the things that you're passionate about, you will not be competing with anyone. You will be following what you actually want to do. And as someone who recently graduated, I am always open to helping uh, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors in anything that I can do just to push that community aspect forward. So again, if anyone needs anything, if you feel like you're being really competitive here at Hopkins, please let me know how I can help. But really, it's a very supportive environment, a very collaborative environment here. Uh, another great question that came in, has there ever been a time where being curious became difficult? Got you in a pickle, and how did you move past it? Well, let, let, let's go Lizzie and then Jalen on this one. I think for me, being curious for me has looked a lot like exploring as I go and I think in terms of like has it gotten me in a pickle it's gotten me in a pickle in the sense that a lot of the people that some of the people that I'm surrounded by have known what they wanted to do since like day one and have really stuck to that and for me my journey has not at all looked like that like I've changed my majors and joined and drops clubs so many times and so for me, sometimes it feels like I'm behind every everyone else, and so I find that sometimes I'm like, oh, like should I not have done that? Like should I have just known ahead of time what I was going to do and just stuck with that no matter what? So I think with that, like it has been sometimes hard to be curious because you keep starting new things, but I think for me it's more important to know that I like what I'm doing rather than just to be super deep into something would be like, actually, I kind of hate this though. Yeah, and I'd say for me, um, being curious, I guess the one caveat is that you need to retrace your steps and you need to um, kind of document what happens so that you can, learn from, you can learn from being curious. So whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that happened from being curious, uh, being sure to write it down or, or record it somewhere so that you are sure that you don't make that same mistake again or that you uh, pursue a, a path further that you found to be interesting. So that would be my advice. So three of the four of you are actively or have actively done a startup. Um, and Lizzie, I know you've, you've explored it as well, but you've all done projects. Uh, a great question from the audience is, how are you financing that? And how are you finding support for that from either office? And we'll go, um, we'll go Stone, Jalen, um, Selena on this one. Great question. So my startup, Higher Grounds Vending, um, to give a little context, that actually came out of an idea of a class at Hopkins called Foundations of American Enterprise, also known as Introduction to Business. Um, and then, you know, we had this idea and we wanted to take it a step beyond. And so what we did to buy our first vending machine that you see is we just bootstrapped it. We had four people and we found out how much we have to, you know, meet that goal and we each contributed amount to meet that. But also a great resource is the Pava Center. Right after I finished that course, it was freshman summer, and I applied for the SAMU incubator at the Pava Center. And that is like a, you know, a three or you know, a few week long uh, interactive course where you meet with other startup founders, and they provide you with funding and a lot of guidance. In addition to that, there's the Spark and the Fuel program at Pava Center, which all guarantees you know, a, a stipend that supports your startup, but also a presentation at the end where you can earn up to $10,000 and more instead of funding. So that's a great resource. Should I go? So my experience is a little bit different in that the company that I founded very long time ago was a video production company, so I really just needed my computer and a few uh, pieces of software. So I can't answer too much of the question of funding, and I know that there's many people here who can t uh, speak more to the many opportunities for funding. Uh, but I will say in terms of um, finding your worth and finding what to value a product. I can speak a little bit to that. Uh, it's important to always um, 
to always think about that, to always think about uh, what, what your product is worth, what to, um, what, what your expenses are as well, and, and, and how to run a profitable business. Um, I, I won't go too much into it. I know we don't have that much time, but um, yeah, that, that's always just something very important to think about and also will uh, connect to, to knowing how much you need to fund um, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I have a lot to say for this question, but first and foremost, you guys are all students, which means everybody wants to talk to you and know what you're doing. As students, you have so many opportunities for something called non-dilutive funding. So non-dilutive funding is basically free money. It has no strings attached, and usually the way that you can apply for this is through some grants or something called pitch competitions. I financed my ventures primarily through pitching at pitch competitions and applying to non-dilutive funding in the form of grants. So if anybody is interested, if anyone's trying to bootstrap or finance their startups, please come to me. I'm so happy to help you with any type of application. I also was a strategic advisor at the Pava Center where I helped early stage ventures apply for this same type of funding. I myself have gone through this process repeatedly. I've gone through the Pava Center's accelerators, their Spark and Fuel programs. So I have so many resources to talk about in terms of funding, but also I just want to reflect that the Pava Center is also such a phenomenal resource. They have their own funding sources that they give to Hopkins student startups, and they are just an incredible resource if you want to be a student entrepreneur here at Hopkins. So again, I have a lot to say, but I'll just leave it at that. Matthew kicked us off with, you know, exhorting us to think about designing our life and what we want to do and who we want to be. And we're getting some good questions around how do you find balance in all these things that you're doing as you, you know, go ahead and pursue your curiosities. So um, maybe Lizzie and then Stone on this, to tell us a little bit about how you have found balance in your life, knowing that there's not one answer that will satisfy everyone's unique personality, but tell us a little bit about your journey on that. Okay, well, for me, I think it's a bit of prioritizing things, knowing that like, yes, I have my classes and yes, I have these clubs and yes, I have this lab, but I really need to like spend time by myself or spend time with my friends. And so making time for those things, I think is a way, like you just kind of have to like make time for them, I think is part of it. I think also for me, I like to commit to things that are a bit more flexible. So like I tend to join clubs where your participation is a bit more voluntary. It's not like you have to be here every day at this time. So for me, that's been a way that I've been able to balance everything, but I know it works differently for everyone. I definitely agree. Um, but also, I, I do have some advice, but I would pre preface by saying like, during finals week, it's really hard to maintain balance for me. Like I'll be lying if I say I have balance every day during finals. However, you know, I have a lot of things to juggle on my plate as well these different roles and responsibilities. And what I found to be helpful is to focus on one task at a time. Uh, instead of you know, trying to you know, do 20 minutes of this and 20 minutes of that, it's hard to keep track of it all. I just want to dedicate you know, two hours to this task, get it done good, and then move on to the next. That's how what's worked for me. So I'm gonna jump in with a little bit of a follow-up. Um, there's a framework that we use in life design where we acknowledge between work, between health, between play, um, all of these things can't be full at the same time. And so I think that's your point around finals, that work might be real heavy there. But I do want to ask uh, maybe Jalen and Selena, your time here, let's talk about the play gauge, the passions and hobbies. We're talking a lot about all of the resources and, and the amazing work that can be done here. How have you nurtured and nourished your passions, your hobbies in, in the uh, Hoboken campus? So for me, it's interesting. Uh, like I mentioned, I have a minor in music and I play piano. So I kind of have combined like the work and play in that aspect in that I play piano as a passion, but also I get a grade for it, which I think is really cool. Um, so that definitely does help to, to um, prioritize my passion, which is, which is playing piano. Um, but, but apart from that, I think that it is important to um, time box your schedule and include free time in your in your calendar so that you know time to not work. Um, I'm sure there's like apps out there that you can use um, to to manage that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would suggest um, 
fi finding ways to maybe, if, if needed, combine like work and play in, in some aspect, um, but also just time box your, your schedule so that you are spending time doing free time and not working all the time. Yeah, to add on to that, I would just engage in self-care, engage in activities that I really enjoyed. So for example, in high school, I did ballroom dancing. And so I joined the ballroom dance club here at Hopkins, which is a really awesome club, a really fun time. Um, I also just love exploring Baltimore. I'm myself from Baltimore. And so I'd go visit Hamden a lot. I'd go to cafes or bakeries with my friends. Um, so just exploring the community and, and making time for myself. Great question from the audience. Let's talk about failure. Tell us about a time that, whether it was one of these hobbies or whether it was school or an internship maybe, that things ended up being more difficult and you felt like it just, it felt like a failure. How did, what did you learn from that? How did you rebound from that? How'd you cultivate your curiosity through that? And um, we'll start with Lizzie and then whoever wants to follow up would be great. I think for me, the first thing that I'm thinking of was, I mentioned before I went on intercession trek over intercession to New York, DC, Baltimore. And at that, there were a lot of networking events and I'm actually a pretty shy person. So for me, these were really intimidating, very exhausting. And I found that like, I would talk to a couple people, but like I was not good at networking events at all. And so it was it was really eye-opening experience like oh this is really hard i think i definitely learned the ways in which i like to interact with people and get to know people even on a professional sense is not really through networking but also it motivated me to want to get better at that so i ended up going to some networking events later in the semester at the life design lab which i recommend that you do they're like good safe spaces to do that sort of thing but that's the first thing that comes to my mind yeah, I can follow that. So like I said, I'm an entrepreneur. And by that definition, I've failed many times. I really believe that to be a good entrepreneur, you have to learn and know how to fail early on and be OK with that. So before I founded Fetal Therapy Technologies, I had failed as early as high school trying to make a student driving app for teen drivers where parents track their teens driving, which I now realize is a terrible idea. It's basically Life360 and nobody wants that, right? But I had to fail to learn all of my mistakes. And so you fail the first time and then you try again and you learn so much when you try again. And you might fail a second time, which I did a little bit. And now I'm on my kind of third venture where I've learned so much and applying all of those lessons throughout. And so the same thing is true in college and any activities that you've done. I mean, I failed just by trying out for clubs and getting rejected, but that's okay. You learn to move on and to try the next thing and the next thing and see what sticks. So don't be scared of failure. Um, you'll encounter it, you know, sometimes during your Hopkins journey. And it's just something that's part of the journey and part of your time here. A question that we had for you, we'll start with Jalen um, and popcorn to someone else. What's something that has surprised you being here at, at Hopkins? I was very surprised, like I'm sure you guys are doing uh, freshman, freshman year, especially orientation was where I met most of my friends. Uh, and I was actually very surprised how just reflecting on that now going into my senior year, how the same people who I met at the same types of events three years ago are the same people who I'm hanging out with now. And I think that that is just a testament to um, the relationships and the connections that you make at Hopkins. Um, and I would challenge everyone to embrace that, uh, the, whether you meet them here, whether you meet them in class, whether you meet them at an internship, during intercession, whatever, embrace those connections uh, and continue to foster them. Uh, because they will help you to get through college. I, I am certainly a testament that uh, my friends did help me get to where I am right now. So uh, that's what I would, um, that's my advice to everybody. I think something that really surprised me was like how many resources there are. There seems like there's an office for literally everything that could ever happen to you. I think it's hard to learn all of them, but I do encourage you to like look through them. I think. I didn't really realize that college was like that. So for me, that was really surprising just to realize that like basically everything that you could want to do, there is people to support you here. 
Uh, Selena gave us a great shout out earlier to exploring Hamden. Uh, I'd love to hear from our other panelists, what's something that you've discovered about Baltimore that you really enjoy and would recommend to your classmates? I can go, yes. So in the spirit of uh, entrepreneurship, one thing that I learned in my time at Pava Center is there's this uh, thing called Upsurge Baltimore, which you can check out their LinkedIn. They host events, I believe, every Tuesday or very frequently on Tuesday nights where you know, they emphasize equity and startups evolved around that where you can meet like-minded people in Baltimore that are also passionate about uh, startups. Uh, some other things, you know, there's some great restaurants around here. I love Ekiben. You guys should check that out. And um, for haircuts, I always go to Ellie's Hair Studio. There's like the best. Just giving you guys free advice. We did get someone in the audience asking for beauty tips, so that's that's a perfect a perfect shout out. I don't know. Uh, one of our ladies want to, or Lizzie, you want to weigh in? Anything else that surprised you that you enjoy about Baltimore? Um, another place that I really love about Baltimore, if you guys haven't had the chance to check it out, is Mount Vernon. Um, some of my favorite spots there are Mount Vernon Marketplace. It's like a big food hall with some gourmet like food stalls. And there's also the art museum that's right next to it, the Walters Art Museum. And the, of course, if you haven't had the chance to visit, the Peabody Library is beautiful. So the whole Mount Vernon area is a great place. Um, You've, you've mentioned a bunch of different resources on campus. Obviously, we have Life Design Lab, we have the Pava Center. Let's leave them aside for a moment. Clearly, two of the best. Uh, but what other resources would you recommend for everybody that are here on campus? We'll take two of you. I don't care, just jump in. I would recommend SOS, Student Outreach and Support. I think it's kind of not very much talked about, but Basically, it's just like if you get in a situation and it's like weird or scary and you don't know what's going on, they're the people to talk to. They can loan you a laptop. I know they have, they can like loan you money if you really need it. Like they, if you get really sick, they can help you. So just if anything happens to you, I definitely recommend looking into SOS. They have case managers who can help you navigate all the resources on campus and what options you have. There's also a program called Pilot, which is a way for certain classes for you to get extra academic support. Uh, you meet every week and you go through practice problems and you have someone there who is very experienced, who got a good grade in the course um, to, to lead you through those questions. Uh, it has definitely helped me in all the classes that I took uh, where, I, where I use Pilot and I would uh, recommend to anybody if you have that opportunity to uh, take advantage of it. Great. Um, one more question from the audience, and then we're going to go into start going into some wrap up. But getting a number of questions about how to build your network, whether it's with alums, whether it's with classmates, whether it's with professors, give us some some tips and tricks. And uh, Stone, you're obviously an outgoing person. Why don't Why don't you kick us off, and then maybe we want somebody who identifies as a quieter person. Maybe they want to jump in and, and share from their perspective. But again, how do you build your network? while you're here. Definitely. So to answer that question, I want you guys to look around you, right? Your peers, there's no doubt that they're going to be future millionaires, you know, politicians, philanthropists, and of course, a lot of great doctors in here. So, you know, the best way to build your network is, in my opinion, you make, you know, a small group of friends, and then from there, you know, you get introduced to more people. And the tip I have is to just be genuine. The best way, in my opinion, is to be genuine to other people. There's no reason, you know, when you go to co uh, college to put up a fake front just to network. The best way is to do it through friendships. Um, I believe that, you know, Hopkins, there's so many different people, you would definitely meet a lot of great friends. But on top of that, there are specific, like, networking events that you can go to. Upsurge was one I mentioned. Um, the Pava Center hosts the, uh, networking events, you know, for you to get pizza and talk to people. But there are also just different clubs you can join. So that's my advice. And I think 
to add on to that, if you want to network with people who are further into the career, I think the best thing you can do is just like email is going to be your best friend. People love talking to students, so you have like the dot JHU at the end. They're like, yes, I want to talk to you. But I think just like emailing people, I mean like, hey, can I like talk to you for like 30 minutes? People love talking to you and like talking about your interests and what they're doing and like giving you advice. So I think that's a really great way to get in connection with professors or alumni or just like if you find random people on LinkedIn whose careers you think are cool. So just email a bunch of people and they usually respond and are really excited to talk to you. I just want to echo everything that's being said here. And again, I think this is where that word curiosity really comes in. In my experience, if you cultivate genuine curiosity in your professors, in your peers, in staff, and alums, that can help you get over any awkwardness that there is. And I'm one of those people where I go to shake hands and you know, be in a networking hour, and I feel awkward. It is not my favorite time of the year. Uh, but if I cultivate that genuine curiosity in the people around me, I can talk to anyone. Matthew, what, what's the last question that you have before I bring us home? Yeah, I think it's a, a broad one that uh, putting yourself back in these seats, what is that one piece of advice that would have been extraordinarily helpful as you started your Hopkins journey? And, and we'll go down the line. Yeah, we want to hear from everybody on this one. Yeah, definitely. So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but my advice would be always pursue what you are passionate about. At Hopkins, you're going to see a lot of people doing like 20 gajillion things at once. But you should always remember to be doing the things not just for a line on your resume, but because you genuinely and actually care about them. And doing these things brings you joy. So for example, for me, the two primary things that I've engaged with in my time at Hopkins have been pursuing entrepreneurship and working at the Pava Center. So those are things that I've really enjoyed. I've genuinely enjoyed my startup teams and being able to teach other startups. Um, and the other piece of advice I'd give is to always take initiative. Again, your students, people want to talk to you. You have so many resources that are available to you. Send those cold emails, meet each other, be open. It's really a rewarding experience being at Hopkins and you have such an amazing resource at your fingertips. I think the advice that I would give myself is never suffer in silence if you're going through it. Like as I said, there's so many resources on campus, but also like if you're getting really behind in the class, email the professor and be like, hey, help. Or like, you know, reach out to your friends. There are so many resources to help you and it does not help you at all to like be going through it or suffering in some way just in silence by yourself. And I think I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I'd just been more open about that. Yeah, and I, I would say enjoy this time. I think that this is, uh, college is one of the few places where you are encouraged to try new things, to go out of your comfort zone. I'm not saying that you can't do that in the real life, but it's much harder. Um, so use this time to uh, meet new people, to do, new, do, do things out of your comfort zone, try a new sport, try um, a new habit, um, make a startup, do something different because um, now is the time to do it. Um, there's no better time than now. So, The other panelists said everything, couldn't have said it better. I'll keep it simple. Uh, keep a cool head and a warm heart. Can we thank the panel for sharing their thoughts with us? Really appreciate it. I know Matthew and I echo everything that was said, and I just want to again give uh, Matthew and his team at the Life Design Lab a really big shout out. As you explore your career options, as you explore internships, as you explore the person that you want to become and the work that you want to do, you want to go meet there, you want to study there, you want to reach out. At, uh, so connect with the Imagine Center. Uh, they're right around the corner, great place uh, to connect. Matthew, could I uh, ask you to go to the next slide for me? Would you be so kind? Um, I also want to, of course, shout out the, the PAVA Center and my team, which, as you have heard, uh, is committed to helping you create a company and a startup. And we have a lot of different events going on this fall that I would encourage you to check out. We would love to see you there. Uh, everything that we do at the PAVA Center is free. All of our money is free. All of our advice is free. It's part of your education here. 
But the first thing I want to shout out on our events list, this is going to take you to a very long list of opportunities. Uh, the first thing is we are having an open house on September 5th. There is an RSVP link, and I would ask that you RSVP if you want to come on out. It's like a 10-minute walk from here. But if you come on out, if you RSVP, I'm going to get free pizza for everybody. Uh, we're going to have other snacks. We're going to have door prizes. And this is a time to meet other entrepreneurially curious students, uh, both people like who are up here on the panel today, each other, uh, and some other resources on campus to help you if you want to create your own startup. The second one that I want to shout out is our kindling, like uh, the sticks that you make a fire with, kindling. Uh, this is a workshop that we are having on September 20th. You do have to register for this. So if you're out there in the audience and you're thinking, I would like to be an entrepreneur, but I don't know which idea to go with. Maybe I don't even have an idea. Well, this kindling workshop is for you. We're going to have a panel of industry leaders, alums, and friends come in, and they're going to give you some of the biggest challenges that they see in our future as a society. They're going to talk about medicine. They're going to talk about the environment. They're going to talk about CS and AI. Uh, they're going to talk about energy and sustainability. And then we're going to break down. We're going to do some brainstorming. We're going to do some research. And from that experience, you'll have the opportunity to then join a team and do a whole bunch of customer discovery and build your network over the coming semester. So we highly encourage you to check out that event on September 20th. Selena here on stage is one of the original authors and leaders behind that. And so she'll be there uh, and would love to, to work with you there. OK. So whether it is uh, these events or some other exploration there fall, uh, this fall, next spring, all of us here on stage want to connect with you and help you. Uh, after this talk today, we're going to hang out here in the front. I know some of you have places to go, and that's totally cool. But if you want to come shake their hand, join them on LinkedIn, ask them a question that we didn't get to today. Uh, there's lots of other great questions coming in about specifics around their ventures and things like that. This is a good excuse to come up and be curious about them. Uh, can, is this, can we go to the last slide for me, Matthew, there? Would you be so kind? Is this, ah, there we go. Okay, so again, uh, the Life Design Lab is linked off of here. The Pava Center is linked off of here. A uh, lot of great stuff, great opportunities are on there. We also are giving out swag at the exits. Uh, we have a, a little bookmark. We have a flyer. We have a sticker. Uh, and that sticker, if should you choose to put it on your computer, says confidence through curiosity. And, you know, man, we just really believe that, that the way to build confidence is through cultivating that genuine curiosity. And I, for one, think that this is the secret to never being bored. I think this may even be the secret to life, is to cultivate that curiosity. Cultivate your sense of wonder and appreciation in people, places, things, the entire world around you. It'll lead to you taking good risks and moving forward with confidence. Uh, one round of applause again for everybody here on stage. Thank you so much. As said, we're gonna exit over here. We're gonna shake hands, but we're, other than that, we're done. Thanks, everybody.